Tell you there champs and how you going? Today I'm going to be looking at Dell's refresh, the Skylake refresh of the Inspiron 7000 series 2-in-1 hybrid. Initially when I got sent this laptop, I thought it would be not much chop, but actually this is a really good device. And if you're interested in a hybrid or even if you're just interested in a really good quality laptop, stay tuned and watch this review because it's really surprising how good this is. So let's crack on and get on to the review. So this is the 13 inch version. You can get a 15 inch version of this. It's Dell's Inspiron 7000 series two in one. As I said, it's the Skylake model. It's the new refresh. Starts at 999 Australian dollars. And this device here costs 1500 Australian dollars. So that's $500 cheaper than the comparable XPS 15 with the same sort of specs. So it's a $500 saving on that. So what do you lose for that $500? Well, let's have a look. This model here has Intel 6th generation CPU. It's the i5. It has a 15 watt part. It's exactly the same part that's in the XPS 15. It has Intel HD 520 graphics. It has eight gigabytes of memory. It has a 256 gigabyte solid state drive. A full HD 13.3 True Life LED backlit touch display. It's an IPS panel, so it has great view and angles. It has a 43 watt hour three cell battery. So it's a smaller battery than the XPS 15, but there's something really surprising about this battery on how long it lasts. I'll get to that later. It has a 720p webcam. It has Max Audio tuned speakers here on the side. One on each side. So it's 19.41 millimeters thick, weighs 1.66 kilos, which is 3.66 pounds. So it's 400 grams heavier than the XPS 13, and it's around four millimeters thicker. Just to compare the sizes, this is my XPS 15 here, and you can see there, it's around the same thickness, not much in it. You'll see how much smaller it is. It's not as small as the XPS 13, of course. And comparing it to the surface, it's obviously going to be a little bit thicker than the surface and a little bit bigger. So the first thing that surprised me was its design. So what do you think this is made out of? What's it look like? Looks like aluminium, doesn't it? Or some sort of alloy. So it's plastic, so there's no escaping that. So it's not going to feel premium, but it certainly looks premium. This design, I really love this design. I love the squared off look of it. I'm sick of seeing laptops with rounded ends and stuff like this. I mean, it is rounded off here, but it looks very square. And I'm a big fan of this design. It looks premium. There's no doubt about it. It looks the part. At the Dell logo there, you have the special hinges on the top. These are actually metal, and this gives it the ability to flip around nearly 360 degrees. You have the bottom there. You have the exhaust vent. And then you have all the screws and the rubber feet there and the hinge, of course. Open it up and you'll see the island type of keyboard here. It's actually surrounded by some sort of rubber finish there. That's sort of some sort of rubber finish here. The keyboard's really good. I'll get to that later. Trackpad's actually decent as well. And there you can see this design here where it sort of rounds off that. Even though it's squared on the top, it sort of rounds off and slopes down at the front. I'm really digging this design. It looks premium, even though it doesn't feel it, it looks it. You have the Windows button there. So when you're in one of the tablet modes, it disables the keys so that you can still use that. But what you'll see missing on the front is obviously the power buttons, because the power buttons are on the side, which is a problem because if you have it in tablet mode like this, and you close it like that, you're gonna turn off your computer. So that can be a problem. Let's get to the port, shall we? On the right hand side, you have here, you have the power button, you have the volume rocker, you have one of the speakers, USB 3, an SD card slot, and here, interestingly, you have a stylus, which is an interesting piece of kit there. Um, make no mistake, this isn't for artists, this is more for marking up documents and taking quick notes. If you're an artist, you're not gonna be using this. On the left hand side you have the Kensington lock, the power port, full HDMI, two USB 3 ports, 
a headphone jack there and another speaker. So overall, I really love the design. The fact that it's plastic isn't too much of a big deal when you consider that it's $500 cheaper than the Dell XPS 13. It's pretty much got the same hardware other than it doesn't have a Thunderbolt 3 USB type C port. And so you can see the cost savings there. They're made out of plastic. They haven't put the Thunderbolt 3 port there, USB type C, and that's where you're getting the savings. But this is a much more versatile laptop. You can save because you can use it as a tablet and so on. And I think the plastic will be a lot more durable than aluminium, which is quite soft. Looking at the screen, it's a really good screen. It's touchscreen, as I've mentioned before. If you get a 1080p XPS 13, you don't get a touchscreen. So that's another advantage this has. The touchscreen works well. It's very responsive. The colors, compared to some screens, it may not look as saturated, but the colors are spot on. The viewing angles are really good. It's not as bright as the XPS 13 screen, so it's not quite as good as that screen. I'm more than happy to do any Photoshop video editing on this. It's a screen I can trust, and I don't really have a complaint about it. So with this laptop, as I said, it's a two-in-one, so you can do all these modes. You can have it in tent mode. You can have it in presentation mode which is like this and you can also have it in tablet mode or clipboard mode however you want to say it so how it works is when you push back the screen more than 180 degrees so say for example here this button's working and you push it back and those buttons aren't working anymore so that's where you would need this button so none of these buttons are working at all now. And this is where you would need this Windows button. And once you bring it back, the keys will automatically enable and you'll be able to press the button and use the keyboard again. This is a really good keyboard. It's very quiet. It feels good. It is shallow. That's one thing. It doesn't have that much travel, but it just feels so nice. The cushioning of it, the... Um, the muted sound, it's very quiet and it's pleasing to type on. If you really want a lot of travel, well, you're not going to maybe like it that much, but I like this keyboard. Trackpad 2, although it is a bit clunky, um, it's very usable. The gestures all work well. Obviously, when you click it up the top, it's not as good as when you click it down the bottom because obviously the hinge is there, but um, it's not as good as the XPS 15 or 13 but it's not far behind. I think you'll be happy with this trackpad. So sound quality from the speakers is actually really good. They're loud enough, but then certainly not the loudest speakers I've heard. If you really, if you want speakers that are really loud, you might not like these, but most importantly for me, at maximum volume, they don't distort. So let's have a listen. Also get this stylus here it's a what you would call a dumb stylus meaning that it doesn't have batteries or any electronics inside it this is passive I believe they call it so this is no good if you're an artist or anything like this but this is this will be used for marking up documents but as you can see my son he loves playing with it and if you're an executive that has to take notes mark up documents and stuff like that or even if you just like to use a stylus instead of a instead of your finger this is very useful but if you're an artist it's not the stylus for you now this has a smaller battery than the xps 13 so i was expecting the battery life wasn't going to be that great and if you actually look on dell's website it actually says up to six hours battery life so you're thinking if it says up to six hours battery life we know that manufacturers sometimes like to embellish their battery performance but in this case they didn't embellish it at all they've understated the battery life and as you can see there in the battery report it's actually a Sanyo battery and it's 45 watt hours I lost about three percent power overnight in standby I'm able to get um, eight hours on this 
and I reckon you can stretch that. And considering the website says you can only get six hours battery, I don't know what's going on there, but you'll easily get the six hours they claim, and I'm getting eight hours. So that's just with general web surfing and so on. This isn't the BIOS it's shipped with, so maybe when they were testing it, it only got six hours, but now eight hours, no problem. So this model I have here has the Intel 6th generation Core i5-6200U. So basically it's exactly the same part that's in the Dell XPS 13 Skylake processor. And usually what I do with my review units is I edit the video that you're watching but because I've reviewed two laptops with exactly the same part, I know how this performs. This is a really good performer. You can edit 1080p video, no problem. I wouldn't be wanting to edit 4K video on this. You can use Photoshop, no problem. And you can play casual games like Football Manager, Minecraft, stuff like that, no problem. So the performance is really good. You're not going to be playing AAA game titles unless you want to run them at 720p or something like that. But casual games and video editing, full HD, Photoshop and stuff like that, this laptop has you covered in that department. The SSD performance is decent as well. We got 543.9 megabytes per second read and 338.9 megabytes per second write. So it's basically your normal SATA SSD performance. It definitely won't be a bottleneck. As I said before, when I got this laptop, I wasn't expecting that much but I'm really surprised. This is a really great laptop. It's very versatile, being a two-in-one. It's small, it's light, and this plastic, even though it doesn't feel premium, will be very durable. It has great components inside, and it definitely looks premium. I really love the design of it, and considering a comparable spec, XPS 15 will be $500 more. It makes you wonder, can you handle the plastic? and that little bit of extra thickness and size. Maybe you can save yourself $500 and get this instead. It's definitely worth pondering the question, but certainly if you compare it with the HP Spectre, I think it will stack up well against that. So, so there you have it guys. Let me know if you have any other questions on this laptop. I think it's a really solid buy and I would not hesitate buying one of these. If this video was helpful, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see a lot more tech content coming soon. And until next time, champs, tally ho.